All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we're gonna talk about powering It sounds like your internet froze. If you maybe want to like turn your video off, maybe that would help. Um, um so a little. Did I hear somebody? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Okay. A little more background on our presenter. Alex is a research engineer at the Center for Energy and Environment, where he has worked since 2010. He conducts research on emerging technologies in residential and commercial HVAC systems with a focus on field instrumentation and data analysis. Alex's recent research includes cold climate air source heat pump efficiency, rooftop unit optimization, tankless water heating efficiency, and commercial boilers. He has worked with CEE since 2010 and has a BS in biosystems and agricultural engineering from the University of Minnesota. Um, and we are so grateful to have him here with us today. So this is going to be, it's going to look like Alex is going to give us a presentation and then afterward is very much meant to be a conversation. We've saved plenty of time for discussion, so feel free to leave your questions in the chat, and that's where our discussion will begin. Um, unless my colleagues want to add anything else, I will hand it off to Alex to get started. Okay, go ahead, Alex. All right. Thank you, Imani. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Alex Hainer, and I'm a research engineer at Center for Energy and Environment. And um, today I'll be talking about a Minnesota CARD funded research project that we conducted titled Overcoming the Market Barriers for RTU Retrofit Enhancements. Before we jump into the project, I just wanted to give some background on Center for Energy Environment or CEE uh, and what we do. So we are a nonprofit that deals with really all things related to energy efficiency. Um, this includes a wide variety of programs focused on this work. And I am involved in the research team and we conduct research projects in uh, really many areas, mainly focusing on field application and market studies of energy technologies and ideas. And we'll be touching on one of those projects today. So CE has been involved in multiple research projects related to rooftop units over the years. Um, the first was a, again, that Minnesota CARD funded study in 2013. This involved field testing a variety of retrofit packages that were in the early phases of their development. The second CARD project was a characterization study to perform market research. Um, this was really to determine various characteristics about the RTU market in Minnesota. Um, overall, these projects taught us that the RTU market is uh, large and retrofit packages offer tremendous potential. So that brings us to now, um, you'll see uh, two projects there. First is the one we'll be talking about today, which is um, related to RTU retrofit technologies. Um, and then finally, we're also conducting multiple uh, field demonstrations on heat pump RTUs. From our previous characterization research, we found that um, around 80% of commercial buildings in Minnesota are served by RTUs. So this is about 21,000 buildings. Um, extrapolating from the characterization study, this tells us there are um, around 154,000 RTUs serving Minnesota buildings. And um, generally speaking, if the unit isn't new within the last few years. Uh, these are standard efficiency units and can certainly benefit from an efficiency upgrade. So I'm sure uh, most of you are familiar with an RTU, but just want to run through um, quickly kind of what it is and how it differs from maybe a residential system. So first of all, it is condensed into a single package. Uh, the main difference is how it routes air through the system. So a key component of a packaged RTU is the, the damper system. So um, this opens and closes to route return air and outside air throughout the unit. So an outside air damper, you can see in the top right in that diagram called an economizer. Um, this is used to allow fresh air to enter the RTU. This air can either receive conditioning, 
during heating or cooling events or simply be brought in as fresh air for ventilation. Uh, in addition to providing fresh air for ventilation, they have the ability to cool a space if outside conditions are favorable. Um, we typically call this free cooling. RTUs can use a variety of controls. Typically, they rely on uh, standard thermostats. Building automation systems are also common. Typically, you find that on larger systems or buildings, um, but ultimately, it depends on the building type and how the customer wants to control the system. Jumping into the project itself. So uh, the project contained five main tasks. So first we had a technology assessment. This was a broad scan of the RT retrofit market to determine available uh, retrofit technologies, both updated packages from our previous research that we've done, as well as new products on the market. Next, we conducted interviews with key industry professionals and utility representatives to uh, really determine the current state of the market and then any perceived barriers to implementation of these technologies. Field measurements across eight field sites and five different retrofit technologies. From those measurements, we performed energy savings calculations to predict annual savings for each package. And then all of that information kind of led us to uh, results and recommendations for um, retrofit and energy and cost savings and then just potential in Minnesota. Uh, for the technology assessment, key information was gained about the available packages. Um, and our goal was to determine, de to determine packages that uh, can most benefit RTUs in Minnesota. So the goal of the assessment was to find specifics such as um, you know, the ideal application, RTU size, configuration, space type, current manufacturers in the market, the prevalence of those technologies in the current market, you know, which control strategies they use, uh, how easy it is to install these packages, and then kind of the big two are the installed cost and then just overall energy savings potential. Now there are a variety of technologies available uh, that can offer energy savings on a packaged RTU. So this project, we really focused on packaged RTUs. So um, units that are doing both heating and cooling in a, a single package. So I'm just gonna run through each one of these quickly just to give a description. So um, first is evaporator fan control. So this is one of the more uh, common retrofits. This decreases the speed of the fan providing air to the space. Um, Usually you'll hear this called the supply fan. Advanced economizer controls. This is really offering a more robust um, control for determining when to open up the outside air damper and provide outside air. Demand control ventilation uh, is using a sensor in the space, typically a CO2 sensor. Um, this is really to determine um, when CO2 levels are high and ventilation is necessary. Zone controls for larger RTUs that serve um, single zones. Or sorry, it's for single zone RTUs that serve multiple space types and only sends uh, conditioned air to the required areas. Fault detection and diagnostics. Uh, this places sensors on various components of the RTU to identify faults and then alert facility managers of those faults. Advanced thermostats allow for RTU coordination and scheduling, and then finally compressor control. This varies the capacity of the system during cooling events. So as you can see, there are many ways to retrofit an RTU to improve efficiency. So this table, uh, it's pretty hard to read, but it really just shows a summary of the retrofits found through the assessment. It does not include every available package or technology, but really what we consider um, the most relevant. So, um, and it gives you an idea of the amount of features some of these packages offer. I'm not gonna run through this entire table, but we'll cover, cover a few of the 
the technologies in a little more detail in the following slide, but um, the final report has some more details if you're if you're curious about that. There are a few technologies I just wanted to note here that um, were not field tested, but I think are are unique and worth mentioning. So um, 75F is a, a Minnesota company and they they have a retrofit that um, is dynamic airflow balancing, um, which is a way to zone uh, a single zone unit and you know place dampers throughout the system to um, only provide conditioning to areas that require it. The GRTU is a way to vary the compressor capacity and the evaporator fan using a VFD. This is one of the the, the ones that we found that um, actually is able to kind of vary capacity on cooling events. And then finally, Swarm Logic. This is a way to coordinate RTUs to run in a more efficient way, which can reduce uh, peak demand and produce energy savings as well. All right, so these technologies listed here are the, the ones that we actually um, field tested in one way or another as part of this project. So there are three technologies that vary the speed of the evaporator fan. First is the catalyst. This is one of the more well-known uh, retrofit packages for RTUs and uses a VFD on the evaporator fan and ultimately has three tiers of products. So um, first is the catalyst light. This is simply a VFD. The catalyst itself, which is the most, um, the most popular and the one that they, they sell the most of, this adds economizer controls and demand control ventilation. And then finally, the catalyst with EIQ, this is essentially adding an automation system um, to the units to give a live picture of the system and uh, allows you know, facility manage, managers to make adjustments uh, on the system as needed. Termtide is a switch reluctance motor. So this replaces an existing induction motor, um, and these motors are inherently variable speed. Drive pack is, a, a, again, a VFD on the evaporator fan and offers two tiers of product. The drive pack is a VFD only, and the drive pack ARC, uh, ARC is a common acronym in this world, uh, advanced rooftop controls. This adds economizer optimization, demand control ventilation, and fault detection. Uh, the Honeywell Jade and the Bolimo Zip are the last two. So these are both advanced economizer packages. And, um, you know, these, these add more control over economizers that tend to fail uh, pretty often on kind of standard R RTUs. It really just gives you more robust sensors and allows for more inputs um, of various sensors throughout the system and can be integrated with building automation systems as well. So jumping into the review and the interviews that we conducted. So uh, 11 interviews were conducted with representatives from various utilities. So this was five from Minnesota and six from national programs. So these were conducted to gather information regarding their RTU and retrofit offerings. The main goal was to really to gain a better understanding of specific areas where they have had success or challenges uh, with the HVAC market and to gain insight on each utility's approach, um, just to you know how they market things, trade ally engagement, project review, and then just logistics of the rebates themselves. So according to the, the Minnesota utilities interviewed, most RTU related savings tend to come from the installation of variable frequency drives and install or repair of economizers. So the interviewees agreed it's definitely a challenge to achieve large amounts of savings through RTU programs. Typically, um, high efficiency RTUs do not always, well, not typically, high efficiency RTUs generally refer to um, the cooling side of things. So because of this, um, it's hard to yield large savings over baseline efficiency units. Um, another challenge for achieving savings from RTU measures is 
Uh, this is a trend seen through a lot of our research and um, something we heard a lot from all the interviews that we conducted is that customers generally replace RTUs only when they fail. Um, they're often reluctant to invest, invest significant resources into retrofitting their RTUs. And typically we'll just wait um, until the unit has failed, then they work with a contractor to get something installed as quickly as possible. Um, so generally that means that building owners are often uh, lacking awareness about their equipment and then what's available. In addition to the Minnesota utilities, um, utilities throughout the country were interviewed uh, with a goal to recruit utilities from as many regions and climates as possible. Um, so from those interviews, we found that you know, prescriptive and custom rebate programs were common in the utilities interviewed. Um, they also highlighted additional RTU focused program types that they offered through their portfolios. Um, and they kind of went this route just due to low participation numbers, which motivated them to look for other avenues to engage with the RTU and RTU retrofit markets. And then one common thing among all of the national utilities uh, is that midstream programs are uh, particularly common among uh, the utilities and all of them either offered some form of midstream incentive or are currently looking to add them to their uh, programs. So the retrofit program implemented by um, Bonneville Power Administration or BPA, this was found to be um, probably the most effective among the programs analyzed in this study. So they have a rooftop unit control program that utilizes a, a tiered approach. So they have the advanced rooftop controls and the ARC or arc light as the two tiers. So this program has specific retrofit packages that are incentivized. Um, you can see in these tables here. And it use, utilizes a tiered approach again and uh, a dollar value per ton. So this offers higher incentives for larger units that install equipment with more energy savings features. So just as an example, um, a 10 ton RTU that's retrofitted with a catalyst light VFD or a drive pack, which is both just kind of a simple VFD, um, would receive a $1,000 incentive while the same RTU retrofitted with um, the catalyst with EIQ. So this is um, that same VFD equipped with other energy savings features uh, would receive double that amount at the time of retrofit. So um, it's really just a good way to make people aware of what's available and um, offer them a pretty sizable remake, rebate for installing these technologies. So in addition to uh, utility interviews, we conducted in-depth interviews with 14 industry professionals, uh, again, to determine any barriers to implementation and how they saw the current state of the market. So interviews were conducted with um, five contractors, five manufacturers uh, of retrofit technologies, and then two building owners and two distributors of RTUs. So HVAC contractors uh, definitely have a very strong influence on pretty much everything in this market. So uh, system design and operation, they deal directly with the customers purchasing uh, this equipment. And, um, you know, in the interviews, it was definitely cited by everyone that they have a huge uh, say in what, you know, what customers actually purchase and install. Um, generally, this is, again, this is a common theme. RTUs are replaced on failure and customers work with these contractors to replace an RTU, excuse me, an RTU to get something up and running really as quickly as possible. So contractors expressed um, concerns about the cost payback and then lack of prescriptive rebates available. There are a mix of responses when asked about high efficiency equipment. Uh, at the time of replacement, some said that they were 
likely to recommend them if the incentives offset the incremental cost from a standard efficiency unit. Um, overall, a big takeaway from all of our interviews is um, just that custom rebates were mentioned as um, a major barrier for um, just retrofit technologies uh, in general. So most citing that they were unwilling to go through that process. Um, and um, we're hoping for as many prescriptive rebates as possible. So manufacturers, um, they mentioned that contractor engagement and involvement is pretty crucial for retrofit implementation. Um, many manufacturers have started to reach out directly to customers. Um, they're focusing on owner-occupied buildings and chain stores with national accounts. So this offers them the easiest path to implementation. So as these decision makers can approve installations on many buildings and RTUs. Um, but ultimately this, this contractor piece, um, you know, engagement and then just getting them on board is uh, important for these packages to, to penetrate the market. Uh, distributors mentioned that high efficiency RTUs <clears throat> are becoming more popular as a replacement option, as incentives mostly uh, offset the incremental cost. Also, new uh, many new RTUs are coming with uh, coming standard with stage of ev evaporator fans. So, newer equipment is starting to incorporate some of the technologies that we're talking about here for these retrofits. Building owners cited that um, payback period is the biggest factor when considering investing in RT retrofits. Um, really no surprise there. Systems with long payback periods generally do not get implemented. Uh, owners are really just unaware of available packages for retrofit. So if they don't hear about them from their servicing contractor, they uh, are likely just unfamiliar with options for upgrades. And then finally, for building owners, you know, system failure and callbacks are definitely a concern with just new and unfamiliar technologies. All right, the field sites and the field measurements. So we had eight total sites, and um, you know, the sites had a variety of number of RTUs on a building, which is pretty common. You can have a building that has a single RTU and you can have one with 50 and pretty much anything in between. Um, <clears throat> the field tested RTUs serve multiple buildings and space types. So including things like open office, warehouse, light industrial, conference rooms, offices, things like that. Um, and you can see the, the technologies there and um, you know what they actually do. Since there was a wide variety of technologies and packages as part of this field study, the monitoring approach varied to match the requirements of the package. So for each test site, we took um, short-term field measurements and measured total RTU electrical energy consumption. Some of the parameters that were measured in addition to that were um, the gas burner signal during winter months to get an idea of the operation of the system under heating conditions. For the economizer packages, we were also monitoring the cooling call signal. This was to determine when the thermostat was calling for cooling so we could assess if the unit was economizing versus running the compressor. And then space temperature and RH just to see if there are any impacts and comfort levels and if the retrofit units were properly conditioning the space. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to properly analyze the data from <clears throat> the variety of retrofit packages and the field measurements, we used three main approaches for our analysis. For technologies that vary the speed of the evaporator fan, we use two analysis methods. First, using um, the measured field data, along with nameplate information to create annual performance models at hourly intervals using a calculation tool uh, for RTUs that CE developed. 
uh, a baseline model was created and then duplicated along with a VFD retrofit to compare annual energy use under both configurations. This method was used for the, <laughs> the catalyst and turn tide packages. Second approach was using uh, previously measured power data and applying estimated fan speeds during different modes of operation. Um, Again, we are creating a pre and a post model, and this approach was used for the drive pack package. Finally, the, the data for the economizer packages, this was collected during shoulder seasons to characterize um, performance of the standard RTU operation, and then after retrofit to capture um, data during expected periods of free cooling. So here we have the savings. Um, three technologies were tested that varied the speed of the evaporator fan as their main source of energy savings. So that is the, the catalyst VFD, turn tide switch reluctance motor, and then the drive pack VFD. RTUs equipped with the catalyst package, um, you know, save 36% of annual electricity consumption, turn tide at 33%, and then the drive pack at 43%. So that range is pretty um, pretty common from what we've researched in the past and then other research studies have shown. And these values represent the average savings across all RTUs in the study. Now, energy savings from the RTUs uh, retrofitted with economizer packages ultimately did not meet expectations. And um, <clears throat> Some of the units demonstrated moderate energy savings of say two to 9% or so. Uh, a few of the RTUs experienced negative savings. So optimal scenarios for achieving energy savings when retrofitting an RTU with an advanced economizer package, um, things like larger RTUs, buildings that have high internal heat gain from you know people, equipment, lighting, such as industrial manufacturing, conference rooms, things like that. <clears throat> and then colder climates that have a higher fraction of ideal outside conditions for free cooling. Now, just wrapping up with a summary of the market barriers that were found during this project. So um, a big hurdle in the market is that RTUs are replaced only when they fail. And when they do, building owners and contractors make quick decisions to get working RTU to condition their building. This often leads to standard efficiency equipment and then rarely retrofit opportunities on existing RTUs. Custom rebates are generally, um, you know, as a pretty common theme among all the people that were interviewed is that they're difficult and um, generally just take a long time. And this steered contractors and building owners away from implementing efficiency upgrades that require them. RTU runtime and savings can be pretty highly variable as shown in previous research as well as the study. <clears throat> Engaging contractors to represent um, and recommend products has been pretty difficult for manufacturers of retrofit technologies. Lease buildings offer another challenge where um, building owners might not want to invest in efficiency upgrades. In these situations, those who lease the building can be responsible for energy bills, and then the owners themselves responsible for purchasing the equipment. Uh, these situations can make the purchasing uh, <clears throat> of efficiency upgrades complicated. So this contrasts with owner-occupied buildings where the owners would generally pay for both. Um, new standards, have um, been introduced um, on newer RTUs that incorporate more energy savings measures. So, um, you know, some of these features are already being offered on newer RTUs. And then finally wrapping up with some recommendations, contractor engagement is pretty crucial for um, market adoption of these packages. So by providing 
things like energy savings, reliability, payback periods with research, kind of like <clears throat> this project, and then other third party verification contractors can um, get on board with representing these products. Customer engagement is also important to get uh, customers interested in the products. Reaching out with communication newsletters, et cetera, can help initiate conversations with utilities, um, contractors, and then the manufacturers to kind of start the process to determine if there is an ideal retrofit opportunity, and then work to find approved installers. The number one recommendation was to include as many prescriptive <clears throat> rebates as possible. So adding prescriptive rebates, simplifying the custom rebate process can increase adoption. So the that national program that I mentioned by Bonneville Power Administration seemed to be um, pretty successful. <clears throat> so, you know, calling out specific packages and offering a dollar per ton incentive can really help get the word out on, on these um, packages. And then finally, uh, continuing to modify TRM measures so that we can more accurately predict savings. That is all I had. I'm going to drink up some water because I'm clearly just choking here. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, we'll just jump right into questions. Um, it looks like we have our first one from Josh Mason. Um, and he asks, what was the typical HP of the controlled motor for the VFD retrofits? Um, so we were looking at, so these were smaller units. Um, you know, I think generally our units were in the five to 15 ton range and <laughs> our horsepowers were in kind of the two to four range. So not huge. I Obviously you get more savings on larger RTUs, but generally our savings were um, from, you know, the runtime of the unit. So if the fan was running in auto versus on, obviously if you have a fan running in on, you can really experience a lot of savings compared to baseline operation. Um, so, you know, these smaller RTUs are, pretty common on Minnesota. So that's why we kind of wanted to represent those. <clears throat> Great. Hey, hey uh, this is uh, Joel with uh, CERTS. Thank you, Alex, for the presentation. And thank you, Amani, for, for uh, facilitating. And, and also thank you, Maggie, for keeping us on track. <laughs> but uh, just real quick, so you're saying they don't like the custom rebates, but they like prescriptive rebates. Can you give me an example of, of both of those, like the difference between the just a, a prescriptive rebate that they would like versus what's so, the, I'm guessing the custom rebate, it's just, it's too much paperwork, but can you just kind of pencil that in a little bit more, like the likes and don't likes there? Yeah, I think the, I mean, generally the, you know, during the interviews, that was cited as the most common thing. And I don't think this is specific to RTUs and retrofits. I think they're just speaking in general terms. Um, the custom rebate process seems to be difficult. They just, it's something that I don't think contractors really feel like they want to deal with. Um, so <laughs> it can take a long time to do and then also take a long time to get the rebate. Um, so, you know, a prescriptive rebate where it's a single page or two um, where they can kind of pencil in specific, maybe nameplate information about the RTU or runtime or something. Um, and then, you know, process that quickly. I think a lot of the utilities probably do that maybe a little bit differently. And maybe people on this call could probably answer that better than I could. But yeah, I think it's just cumbersome. It takes a long time. And um, you know, just simplifying the process as much as possible is really one of the, the biggest takeaways from this project. Thank you. And, and Amani's like, is there are there any utilities on on the on the call that can discuss? Imani just put this in the chat, and I agree, like discuss their experiences with with 
uh, prescriptive versus custom on this particular on RTUs or maybe on a different technology? Feel free to go ahead and unmute also. You don't need to write it in the chat. So we sometimes it's easier just to talk. So yeah, I, I also, Joel, had the same question. I was very curious about this. So really looking forward to hearing from utilities about this issue. I see John and then Josh, thank you. I can just comment quickly from our perspective. Um, we oftentimes, it, a technology like this, we'll of course cover it as a custom grant if a customer brought it to us or a contractor. We have not seen any applications for a custom incentive come through on this one yet, but um, we oftentimes use our custom incentive for things like this. And if we start seeing enough demand, we'll, we'll launch it as a prescriptive. But um, I, I would definitely say that contractors and customers alike prefer the prescriptive process. It's just a lot easier and quicker for them to get their rebate incentives. And I guess I would just add that there's a lot of unknowns from the customer perspective when they're doing custom rebates. I mean, we need to gather a lot of information to do those calculations and we can't always be super upfront with the customer and what the rebate's going to be until we get that information and go through the calculations. And then I have one more question and I'll, I'll be quiet a little bit more, but Alex, um, you mentioned that some of the newer RTUs are having more energy efficiency pieces built into them. So thinking about our utility friends who are on the call here, you know, they're looking at their the eco, what's mandated through eco or I still call it the SIP program, but I apparently I'm old timey that way. Um, <laughs> um, so are we in, not in danger, but like, is there still opportunities in RTUs that's going to go on for, for several years for um, sort of some of the mandated energy savings or, or is the technology getting so much better and so much energy efficient that um, there's gonna be less opportunities for them to claim um, energy savings? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, you know, from just talking with contractors and doing and distributors, um, I think the biggest thing, so the supply fan, I think, um, the, the codes now are, um, requiring a staged supply fan. So instead of a VFD, that's, you know, allowing it to run at any percentage, they have specific fan speeds, um, for the various modes. So that's certainly going to, you know, increase efficiency on the baseline RTU. I think I've also seen that you know, more just robust economizer controls and, um, you know, fault detection on those economizers, because that's a very common thing for RTUs. For anyone that's familiar, probably already knows this, but, um, you know, those controls can fail pretty quickly. And you have an RTU where, you know, who knows what's happening. The damper could be outside air damper could be wide open. It could be failed shut. You don't have really any idea. Um, of what's happening. So, you know, having some sort of sensor or something, you know, some sort of fault detection to let facility managers know that, you know, something has failed on the unit, I think would help uh, quite a bit. So, yeah, I think this is, you know, pretty common in the, the common trend throughout all HVACs that, you know, baseline efficiency is definitely uh, are going up. Whether it's being implemented, I'm not, you know, 100% sure, but certainly, um, you know, those baseline units are going to be uh, a far more efficient. So, um, you know, good to see efficiency wise, definitely. I'm not good at multitasking, so I'm going to put my question in the chat first, and then I'm going to ask it. Um, curious to hear from utilities on the phone, the call, the Zoom about programs that you have that apply to RTUs, if there's any, if you have any, and then any details you'd like to share. I 
I should also add, and any you are considering. So whether they're not in place yet, but you're thinking about doing them. Maggie, this is Brandon Ottertail. Um, ours are through the prescriptive, or our, ours are through the custom rebate. We can sometimes grab pieces of the RTU if they have a EC fan motor in there. We can grab a little little rebate off of that. We have a prescriptive rebate for the drives if there is one um, on either the supply or the return. And then the custom piece would look at EER or IEER. And to Josh's point, customers aren't always that interested because we don't know what the rebate is up front. And then I'll say, especially with the baseline equipment, about half of them fail cost effectiveness tests anyway. So you go through some information gathering and that it and then it ends up not panning out for the customer anyway. Yeah, specific to these, like this is John at Ottertail. Um, thanks, Brandon. We we don't have any advanced RTU control package um, prescriptive rebates. Brandon, if an RTU heat pump comes in and it meets the requirements, we would rebate that through the heat pump program, I believe, right? Yep. Yep, we can do our, our ducted heat pump rebate on that, which we don't we don't see a lot of. And and I do try to always steer customers to the gas companies too. You know, a lot of a lot of what we see are uh, natural gas fired heating with electric cooling, but the gas companies are in kind of the same boat. Like there's just not a lot of prescriptive rebates through the gas companies either. So customers are just kind of stuck with this piece of equipment that they're kind of yeah. forced to have, and there's not a lot of things they get out of it. We did rebates. evaluate. Uh, the advanced RTU control packages for the last triennial. Uh, I think there were the seventh wave technology and one, one of the other ones that was listed. And um, we just weren't seeing, we did actually, a, yeah, I don't believe we were seeing enough savings potential to really move ahead, but that, that could possibly have moved. Uh, the technology could have advanced to have changed that a bit now too. Yeah, so I guess just on, on that note, I mean, we've seen, <clears throat> so I showed the timeline of our research. So about 10 years or so was when we did our first project on kind of optimization packages, and they've really uh, advanced since then. So they were in their, their very early stages at that point. And I think the key thing that we found through doing this project is that they really have just a wide variety of, I guess I was calling them tiers, but um, energy savings options. So, you know, you can simply get a VFD or something on the supply fan, or you can get a more advanced package that has just more energy savings features. So they offer kind of different tiered products and, you know, um, levels of just payback and then um, just efficiency. Uh, so the savings, I think that's pretty... I think it's pretty straightforward with a VFD. Obviously, it's going to depend on just the, the operation of the RTU. So common thing that we've seen pretty much throughout all of our research is that um, RTU runtime and variation, or just runtime for the fan, cooling, heating, that can vary pretty significantly from unit to unit. But generally, if you have a fan uh, set to run during occupied times, um, you're probably going to see some pretty significant savings from uh, a VFD and then just lowering that fan speed during fan only and then um, just cooling and heating operation. So they're certainly becoming more um, cost effective and then just offering, you know, more simpler packages for the people that don't need um, some of those advanced features. So you got to throw that out there. Alex, can you expand on the, on the fan runtime? So a lot of times we consider HVAC to be some kind of seasonal, right? We're seasonally heating or seasonally cooling, but a VFD on a supply and return fan on a rooftop unit is probably could be considered year round, right? I think that's a fair statement. 
Yeah. So, I mean, generally, um, this varies, but generally speaking with RTUs, um, you know, they serve a wide variety of buildings and space types. So um, generally people will have their fan on and then have the, the outside air damper at a minimum position so that they're getting a fraction of outside air um, just during occupied periods. Um, so, you know, if you have 10 to 12 hours of runtime per day, you know, you're looking at Monday through Friday, um, that's at least 60-ish hours of runtime um, pretty much all year round. So, you know, if you look at it that way, um, that's pretty significant savings potential because, you know, the, the retrofit packages that we studied, if you think of a RTU running at 100% fan speed um, versus the one equipped with the VFD, typically in fan only mode, they're running at 40 to 50 percent, um, which is about a 90 ish percent uh, power reduction. You can get, I mean, you're getting significant savings just from that fan only runtime. And then when the unit does kick on for heating or cooling, it's still running at a lower speed. So I would say typically, um, you know, 70 to 90 percent or so, um, which at 90 percent, you're still seeing about a 30 percent power reduction. So yeah, savings are pretty significant. And, you know, we've seen this through all of our research, but if you have the runtime, generally you're going to see pretty significant uh, electric savings from those packages. So, oh, go ahead, Brandon, if you have a follow-up question. Yeah, there's maybe one other piece of it. Alex, were any of these schools that you studied? So historically schools were always, well, a lot of schools didn't have cooling period because they just weren't open that much in the summertime but we see a lot of schools now and it seems like they're more of a community building where they have a lot of summer run time they have the cooling now and i'm just curious if any of the buildings you studied were schools and if you had any kind of run hours that could support claiming more savings towards drives in general but also rtus to either mm -hmm the EER, IEER efficiencies? Uh, there were no schools. It was mostly office buildings. We had a few restaurants, um, like some light industrial, but unfortunately no schools. Um, so. I've also heard the schools have, they always keep their dampers way, way, way open because they've got, they've got to do fresh air. Um, so they're basic, is, I mean, is that what people are finding is like the, the dampers are just open all the time on schools, <laughs> practically, I don't know. Well, and Joel, maybe on that point, through COVID, there wasn't a lot of direction on what to do with your building except for to open outside air dampers to a hundred percent and just leave them there all year long. Alex, would you think there's any kind of skewing of the savings numbers based off of the kind of the general input that the state, or I don't know who offered it, but that the schools got on damper positioning? Um, yeah. So I don't know. I've, I've heard a lot of different ways for people, you know, kind of combating things through COVID. Um, one of them, like you said, is just opening up outside air dampers uh, just to have a higher fraction of outside air. I don't know about if they were doing, you know, 100% or so, which would certainly in Minnesota have <laughs> a huge impact on savings. I mean, with these retrofits, it's you're still going to see savings from just a lower fan speed, but um, you know, certainly conditioning really cold outside air in the winter or really hot outside air uh, in the summer is going to have uh, an impact on savings. So, yeah, I don't know exactly, you know, who is actually taking advantage of that or doing that, but um, it would make sense that they would be doing something like that in schools. Hey, Alex, I want to put you on the spot. So let's imagine like a lot of folks on the call today that I see municipal utilities and co-ops and 
and investor owned utility like Otter Tail. So, you know, if you saw the, the lowest hanging fruit of all these technologies, as far as like, they're not replacing the entire rooftop unit, but they're doing a retrofit on maybe one one of the widgets. Maybe it's something of the, the variable fan drive controller or whatever. If you saw almost like a no brainer as far as ease, you know, ease for the contractor, ease for the utility to put up a small prescriptive rebate or, um, you know, what, what are a couple of the, the, the widgets or the ideas that could just be the easiest to <laughs> implement uh, and, and yet have a decent return on investment, obviously. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but it's certainly just varying the speed of a supply fan. So it's it's straight for it's it's more straightforward than some of the others to kind of estimate savings from that. So, you know, we've talked about this this runtime uh, issue with RTUs. So, you know, if you have a fan set to on at the thermostat, you can guarantee that the fan is running for X amount of hours annually. And then, you know, if you estimate a fan speed that these either a VFD or the the turn tide switch reluctance motor is actually a full motor replacement. Um, you know, contractors are very familiar with these. They might not have a ton of experience installing them, but, um, you know, in our previous research projects, the manufacturers of the retrofit packages actually sent someone down to train contractors um, and they found it pretty straightforward. So, you know, I think the savings are just guaranteed with a VFD versus um, some of the other ones. And again, with the runtime, if you have runtime hours, um, you know you're gonna have significant savings and it's just, that's the highest uh, savings percentage of anything that we've really looked at. So, you know, you, you rarely need 100% fan flow um, in any mode of operation with an RTU. They're, pretty straightforward to install and we know the savings are are pretty much guaranteed if you have runtime and it's running at a certain fan percentage. So that's what I would say. And then we have a bunch of the certs regional coordinators who are who are also on the Zoom. Is there anything we, you know, with our capacity across the state, I'm afraid you're going to say try to connect with all the contractors, which is we're finding it so difficult, <laughs> but like, for example, you know, the HRAs, we know a lot of the housing, you know, the, the city's housing authorities that are doing kind of low income housing. Uh, I mean, is there a, is there a sector where if we did some outreach and worked in partnership with our utility friends, we could potentially come up with some projects or at least do some better education. And I, anyway, I'd, I'd be curious about your thoughts on that, Alex, but also even if some of our utility friends said, sure, do X, Y, or Z, and we'll pick <laughs> up on it. Maybe. Yeah, I would love to hear from others as well. Um, you know, you mentioned the contractor engagement. That's That has been a challenge. I think contractors generally, um, especially in this realm, kind of the RTU commercial realm, <laughs> efficiency is probably not their number one priority. Um, that being said, we have worked with one or two contractors that, um, you know, they kind of value that. And I think that's really important in just getting these things implemented. If they actually care about efficiency, um, you know, they'll rep these products and then work to install them. But I guess aside from that, um, you know, another thing that we have found in you know, efficiency research is that even though customers, you know, with retrofits, they um, generally are pretty unaware. You know, we've done presentations and talked to a lot of customers that after we kind of show them the savings potential, um, the research that we've done, they become interested and they talk to their contractors and utility representatives about it, and that can get things moving. So I think in addition to engagement with contractors, um, you know, reaching out to, directly to customers can be uh, a good way to kind of go about that. So I mentioned that the manufacturers of the RT retrofits are specifically not necessarily bypassing contractors, but they're reaching out directly to um, customers that are 
in owner occupied buildings. Um, those seem to be the easiest to kind of implement. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if that really answered the question, but um, reaching out directly to customers can be um, a way to do it too, because then they'll reach out to either manufacturers or contractors and get the ball uh, rolling in that realm. So it's hard. This this market has been a challenge, and that was uh, a common theme from from everyone that we talked to. And I think just getting getting the word out there any way you can with events like this, um, webinars, trainings. We do a lot of contractor trainings at CEE for um, some other things that we do. Um, so going around the state and presenting on results. This this is specific to heat pumps, but um, you know, I think something similar could be done with RTUs and retrofit technologies as well. So I know I said a lot of words. I hope I somewhat answer your question. <laughs> yeah, I think that was super helpful for me, at least. Um, and I think that's certainly an overarching trend that we're seeing with a lot of these emerging technologies is the need for more engagement and education. Um, and I know when I first glanced at this, like the title and uh, of this presentation and research, it seems super technical, but a huge piece of it is really education and engagement, which is something that we can all, I think, pretty quickly grasp. Um, and I think that's my biggest takeaway from this presentation today is like, we need more engagement um, and talking to customers before their RTUs or whatever technology fails um, so that they can be prepared to um, implement some more efficient technologies and so that we can make a case for prescriptive rebates over custom. We kind of need that push before we can start creating those types of things. So, um, yeah. yeah. And one ahead. thing I was just gonna say, one thing I didn't mention is that a lot of the national programs or some of them have um, kind of early retirement programs where they are talking with customers before they fail. So I think I mentioned this a couple of times in the presentation that, you know, pretty much all RTUs are replaced only when they fail. But if we can get customers thinking about replacement um, before they fail or something like a retrofit, um, you know, offering programs or something, or at least just educating on them, educating them on that before failure could be um, pretty helpful as well. Perfect. Well, I think it's just about that time. Um, maybe we could squeeze in one more question. Otherwise, all of our gratitude for so much for sharing your expertise with us this morning. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for joining, everybody. We'll send out the slides um, from Alex and the Zoom recording. So thanks so much, Alex, and thanks, everybody, for joining today. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thanks, both.